I think you can see Alyssa from McClure is here. Um, she has another commitment um, this afternoon, and we were wondering if you would um, consider having the energy savings measurement and verification point, uh, report moved to the front of the agenda for her convenience. No problem. Thank you. Happy to have, help her out. So we are recording. Let's see when it started. All right, I will call the facilities committee meeting of the Keystone Central School Board of Directors to order here. We have a fairly lengthy agenda, but I don't think uh, it's gonna be anything that's gonna be too difficult to get through. So uh, with that being said, we will skip over to item C1 about our energy savings measurement verification report. Uh, I think if you've had a chance to look at the agenda and the attachments, you'll see that uh, McClure has included some of our latest savings, uh, dollar savings from the energy projects that we had. So I will turn it over to Alyssa right now because I know she's, it sounds like she's on a tight schedule. So if she would like to take, take it from here and fill us in on, on uh, what we have here. Hi, everyone. Thanks for having me today and for shifting me up in the agenda. This is a construction period measurement and verification report for the Bucktail and Renovo projects. Um, it was a phase two of our energy projects. We were guaranteeing $7,778 worth of savings during the construction period. We actually measured 15904 so we have saved you $8,126 more dollars than we originally expected. Um, this is great news for the district. This is a report that we'll produce again in a year. So I will be back in a year to present, but just wanted to share the good news with everybody that this project is tracking um, almost double the energy savings originally projected. So at this point, I'll press pause. Are there any questions? Um, I'm just really thrilled that we're able to save, you know, this, uh, this amount of money. I mean, it's, uh, it's just everything that we can save is certainly going to be to our benefit. So I appreciate that. And I think it's pretty self-explanatory. I, I don't have any questions for you, for Alyssa, unless uh, anybody else in the committee or anyone else has anything. Elizabeth? Go ahead. Thank you. Hi, Alyssa. It's great to see you. How are you? Great. How are you? Oh, <laughs> I, I'm actually doing really well. I appreciate it. Um, thank you again for an easy to read report. I'm just, um, I think it was page four. And I'm just, uh, it's nothing about the quality of your report. It's phenomenal. Okay. I don't understand the wording. Um, oh, I didn't close it. Did I? Oh, fudge buckets. Hmm. I think it's page four. If I'm going by memory. Okay, I got it up. Got it up. Um, page. No, it wasn't. Oh, I'm so sorry. Bear with me. Um, okay, there's. I'm so sorry. Mm. I should have printed it, but I hate wasting all this paper. Um, okay. I'm sorry, I'm just gonna have to, oh, there it is. I'm sorry, page eight, page eight of your report on the PDF. I don't know what that means. Um, under, it's a heading, it's nothing major. Contract and financial information, Keystone Central School District, amendment one, project pro forma cash flows, 20 year term. Um, uh, I'm just, I don't know, understand what the annual escalation rates, is that like anticipated um, utility increases? Or if you could just explain a little bit about this page, just in layman terms, I'd really appreciate it. Of course, yeah. So this was a page that was a part of the contract. So it was a total project cost of $4 million. The first year energy savings is shown at $16,021. Um, so energy savings are what you see on your utility bill. And moving across the row, operational savings is what you're going to save from not having to replace lamps, 
because you'll have LED with longer warranties. Um, this includes Act 129 rebates that you get through your utilities. Avoided capital outlays are um, costs that had you not done the project that you would have had to front to help offset project costs. Lease payments, um, you paid this uh, that would have showed up if you would have taken out um, a substantial bond, you would have inserted that, um, but it's very cash flow positive. Um, performance assurance or any additional measurement and verification reports that you would want McClure to produce. Um, construction year and year one are always included in the contract at no cost to the district. So we're not showing how many to do those in the future. And then column eight is showing you net savings. The escalation rates that you see above the table, that's what we assume um, your utilities will increase um, annually over the next 20 years. So that's how those were what those assumptions are. We keep those flat at 3% based on historic averages and the, the natural rate of inflation. Okay, that makes, thank you so much. Yeah. Three minutes from you and it's crystal clear. Thank you. <laughs> no worries. And, Question. And, and this is something, if, if the school board directors want to continue this under column seven, performance assurances. So we only get a snapshot for the first year under our contract is from what I believe is correct. And then if we decide as a board that we want to see next year and the next year, because I know utilities are going up and they have been going up, um, is that an option for the district, right? Yep, it's an option. Um, there would be costs and fees associated with our engineering team to bring that report together. Um, I would say nine out of 10 school districts, um, maybe even more than that, do not ask us to come back and redu duplicate this report, um, but we certainly can if you'd like us to. Um, I think most districts find that these savings are, um, that we created asset changes that aren't gonna start using more energy tomorrow, right? Your light bulbs, the HVAC, um, they're gonna to continue to save you money um, even without the report. So that's why typically one year is, is, is typical, but yeah, we'll be back next year. You don't have to make the decision today. Next year, we'll bring back the, the year one report and then you can make the decision then if you wanna free up. Okay, and if you wouldn't mind, just maybe put a little note in your, in your own personal files that, I mean, who knows who's gonna be on the board next year, um, just maybe, Re, uh, revisit that and just see if there's any interest from the whoever the school board members are at the time. Um, and I'm just also sort of assuming that the reason why school districts probably don't invest in seeing future years is because unless they're doing some other major construction upgrade, um, whether it's insulation, solar, whatever it may be, um, that's probably why they don't do a follow-up do you think yeah i think it's that and i think it's you know the the proof of this report is just saying hey we changed out your lights we metered how much electricity they use before and after your lights are not going to start using more energy in year two so mm -hmm. the report i think does its job in year one telling you yes you're going to see those savings and you're going to continue to see those savings um but you know, it's definitely a, a district decision. So I will make a note and uh, I'll give everybody an idea what that fee would be next year when we present. And if there's interest in continuing, um, we can start that dialogue. Okay, thank you so much. It's always a pleasure. <laughs> no problem. Hey, anything else from anyone? Any other questions or comments on this? Yeah, I'll, this I'll just comment that I think some of the, uh, savings where we almost doubled our savings on this project were uh, when we worked with the team in the field uh, we identified some additional areas where we could do uh, building envelope sealing up and we sealed the, the, the perimeter of the building at the top and uh, we really sealed those classrooms up made them a lot uh, a lot more airtight in the insulation I know that's one of the things Elizabeth was always pushing on is you know make sure we insulate make sure we insulate and I think her Alyssa's team identifying that uh, I worked with them uh, when we had the ceilings open. And I think that that's attributed to some of our additional savings on this. And I think as far as looking at uh, ha having them back to, to, to look at additional saving or additional matrix on the, with these reports, uh, as long as we continue to maintain the building, building envelope and maintain the equipment, uh, 
our numbers should stay fairly similar. It's, we have to be careful if we start doing other projects and other things that uh, open the building up and change some of the stuff that we've done last year or did last year. But uh, although it's never a bad thing to uh, be checking that, I think that uh, part of my job is to maintain what we already have. So I'll keep, uh, keep on my guys when they're working in the field to make sure if they open something up to seal it back up, even the smallest penetration uh, can start to take away from the savings. So we're constantly looking at that and maintaining that. Okay, thanks, Rob. Anything else before we move on? Nope. Okay, uh, thank you, Alyssa. Thanks, uh, always, everybody. Always a pleasure having you with us. And uh, thanks for the uh, good news. So talk to you later. All right, we'll go back to item number one on the agenda. And that is our Liberty Curtain Project update. I see we have Jeff Straub with us today uh, on uh, online. And so up to this point, I know that the um, Jeff and his team met with the staff at Liberty Curtain here a couple of weeks ago. And I think you have a meeting set up for uh, later this week uh, to sit down with them one more time before the end of the school year to get uh, some additional input and I think you're going to probably bring them take what have taken what they've uh, discussed with you the other day some think some of their wishes and I'm sure you've worked on that since then so I'll just hand it over to you Jeff and you can kind of and you and Brett can maybe fill us in on where we are and Jackie if she she wants to okay. add anything definitely I yeah today's uh uh presentation or update is going to be pretty straightforward. Um, just a, a quick update and then really just any questions that everybody would have for us today. Um, we have uh, successfully met uh, just in the last few weeks with uh, the staff for all the areas of the building and gone through and uh, uh, preliminary interior layouts for the building. We then took that feedback uh, and we've been working on that for the last few weeks. And as we've just discussed, we're going to be uh, having a second round with the staff uh, this Thursday. Uh, I think from about eight o'clock, Brett, to uh, about 1.30, actually, we're, we've moved another meeting to later in the afternoon. Um, yeah, that's correct. And so the goal of that is that uh, with everybody, you know, going away for the summer, we wanted to get all that input from, from the school district um, so that we can continue to work through the entire summer and meet the project schedule. Um, so uh, we're tracking very well for that. We, we actually just had a preliminary review in our office early this morning, prepping for Thursday. Um, along with that, we were also going to be uh, having a preliminary discussion about the exterior design concepts for the building uh, this Thursday. And that will be uh, later in the afternoon after the, the second round of the interior meetings. And then again, all of this is allowing us to move forward then with both uh, the architectural team as well as the engineering teams are beginning to come up to speed. The structural engineers, the mechanical, electrical, plumbing, uh, we're in the process of engaging the food service consultant for the project for the kitchen uh, component. So, so that's generally uh, where we're, we're at today and uh, really open it up to any questions that, that anybody would have. Okay. Anyone have anything? Okay, Elizabeth. Yes, Elizabeth. Chair Jeff, thank you. Hello. Um, hi, how are you? Good. <laughs> Happy May, yay. May. <laughs> I know, it's almost almost the end. Um, we had some questions from the last facilities committee meeting. Um, do you by chance have any answers for those yet? I'm sorry, if you can brief me again on, and I don't have that list in front of me, I'm sorry. Okay, no, I fully understand. You got a zillion different projects. Um, just um, help help me out, Rob Pasella. What's the word when you have to test the soils to make sure the weight and everything? What's that word that tests? The geotechnical yeah. testing. Geotechnical. Right. So where we stand on the geotechnical test is we have scheduled uh, with the company's ECS um, uh, that will be coming out. Uh, we have done preliminary surveys of the site and the geotech team is on schedule. Uh, they're actually uh, scheduling for a mid-June uh, geotech bore on the site right now. Great. Okay. 
Okay, thank you. And then the uh, other issue with the ground seeps, springs, whatever they've um, standing water. That will also be part of the geotech when when they do that. They do both. They're do, doing both a, a boring for the stability of the soils for the building. The yes. advantage that we have in this scenario is it's a one story building, um, yeah, obviously. Sure. And uh, when you get into a two or three story uh, school, that's when the soils become much more uh, consequential. Um, preliminary discussions that because the geotech in, in order to prepare for them coming out the sites, they're looking at soil maps um, and data that's you know readily available at, at for instance at a, at a county level. Uh, they don't preliminarily see any concerns, um, but they they you know then we come out and do the bores to confirm that. At the same time that they come out, they will be doing what's called infiltration testing, right. uh, which has to do with the water. So that that mm -hmm. and that is built into their their scope of work as well. So that's great. That's we'll great. And so we'll get we'll get a report sometime in June, roughly. Uh, mid, mid, they'll come out in mid June, and then there'll be a back and forth. It, it sometimes takes. Uh, usually, we'll hear from them within two weeks. You know, generally what they ran into, but then it takes a month, a month or so to get that full report from them. Um, okay. Okay. Fair the enough. important thing is right off the bat, they're talking to the structural engineer, letting if there knows if there's any concerns. But then we also document it with a full report. And ultimately, that full report does come to you as the district. That that report is also offered up as part of the contract documents to the contractors. Sure, sure. absolutely. Okay, super terrific. That, that helps us formulate like some some sort of timetable, what to expect in the future. Okay. And, um, I think there might have been one or two more. I don't remember off the top. I, mean, I guess I could just watch the Zoom meeting, but um, the the um, oh Rob Pasella, help me out again. The maximum weight load, what's that? Carrying capacity. I think the carrying, I think that was the word we used last time. The carrying capacity of the culvert bridge. Uh, we, Dr. Martin did direct me to go up and, and take a look at that up there. There's a 12 inch uh, pipe that goes underneath the driveway, the entrance. Uh, although we didn't put a camera down the pipe to find out the condition of the pipe. Uh, that's a fairly small uh, worry in this project. If we have to replace a 12 inch pipe on the driveway coming in, uh, it'll just get addressed in the contract documents to, uh, to replace that piece of pipe. There's no, no worries as far as, you know, loading of, you know, trucks and all that. We've been running buses over it, single axle, single axle buses over it for 40 years uh, with no, uh, no issue. Uh, they, they're as heavy as uh, some of the other, uh, a concrete truck in comparisons on three axles versus a, a bus on a single axle or a garbage truck and oil truck, those sorts of things. So at this point, we don't feel like there's anything to really worry about on that, uh, that crossing where uh, that culvert pipe is. Uh, it appears at the one end, it looks like it may be concrete uh, without camera in it and doing some further details or further research. We, we don't have that, but it's, it's a fairly small piece of this of this puzzle. And, and I could add some to that, Rob. Um, I, I would agree that likely that culvert will will be relocated as part of the project. However, what I have seen on, on previous projects when, when um, correct in this situation, you have had vehicles over the years driving over, so it shouldn't be concerned, but that becomes the general contractor's responsibility. If he damages something on site, uh, he's responsible for its replacement. What would typically occur is it being a construction um, if the civil engineer determines that we're keeping that, we would make the contractor aware of them. And what I've seen in the past is the general, general contractor, as an example, might have a 10 foot long steel plate that he, you know, lays over that pipe. So if they're dry, as they're driving, it distributes the load. Yeah. Um, and, yeah. and frankly, if he wouldn't, if, if they would not address it accordingly, that becomes their responsibility uh, to repair it at, at no cost to the district. So it's not it's not something that's validated as a change order to, to the yeah, client. This, this pipe is located uh, fairly deep in the ground, four to five feet. Uh, so there's a lot of uh, distribution over top of it already. And it's a fairly, in the big picture, it's a small pipe. A 12 inch pipe isn't, uh, the compaction stuff isn't very, you don't worry a lot about a 12 inch culvert pipe. If it was a 36 inch culvert pipe or something else, we might have a different discussion, but this is fairly small and doesn't carry a lot of water. It does carry some water down off the upper properties, but 
until we get the final design and we know exactly where the building is going to be placed after we get geotechnical stuff back and all that, we really won't know whether that pipe's even going to remain. So at this point, uh, I didn't feel it was worthwhile to put a camera down. It, you know, it's a, it, it's a oh, pretty good sense. feat. So we'll, we'll continue to monitor it uh, and uh, we'll address it through the contract documents, as Jeff just said. No, that, that, makes so, that makes so much sense. Thanks for the update. You know, that's so we all, uh, thank you. It makes so much sense until you know X, Y, and Z, but at least it's on the radar. Yes. Um, and I, uh, I, almost, I almost hesitate to say what uh, a citizen told me, but I'm going to tell you. Um, they told me that they believe the Liberty Curtain, and I have no proof. I am just sharing information here. I made no comment whatsoever. Okay, I just want to clarify with everybody. Um, they said that the Liberty Curtain, this is their opinion. I have no proof. Did no research. Okay, just so is anyone not understand what I'm trying to say here? I'm just communicating. Okay, the Liberty Curtain sewer plant is, and they gave me a year of how old it is. I'm not going to repeat it because it could be wrong. And that there are, quote, long-standing issues with their lines, not on the school property. I didn't say that. But that raised sort of, this person is very concerned that our, do we, does the school district architect, I mean, I realize we're only, in, we're only responsible for the pipes that lay on the district property, okay? We're not responsible for what's going down the street. But I, I don't, I just putting it out there. Well, what that, is the point? What is your point? Well, that if we want to increase the amount of toilets or sinks or X, Y, and Z, do we have to purchase more EDUs? Can the wastewater treatment plant accommodate that? So that's the question. <clears throat> or does it matter? Can we add six more bathrooms, 12 more bathrooms? It makes absolutely no difference. When are we going to do yeah. this? Are you talking about in the future? Are we well, going to add more bathrooms? Because I I don't think we have too many more restrooms in this design than we already have. Is that, yeah. is that right, Jeff? So I can answer that. Um, you are correct, EDUs. Uh, what would normally justify that is if, for instance, enrollment had been increasing. Um, and that's not the, the, the rationale for this project. It's unfortunately what we've all discussed is you've got a facility that's woefully you know, beyond its age. Um, right. This is not an increase of student capacity. This is um, a situation of, uh, you know, replacement building. Um, that puts us in a good uh, position with meeting with uh, the approval agencies, uh, most notably for the sewer is, you know, we're, you know, wh whether how many toilets we have in the building or not, um, it's really, it comes down more to the staff and the number of students uh, in the building which we will, we will not be increasing. Um, and the district can document that through um, enrollment uh, for the facility. And so when we go to the agency approval, if anything, what we're gonna show is that we're gonna be reducing uh, both sewer and water usage because we'll be using low flow fixtures. Yes, well, right. Um, uh, right. Which didn't, you know, wasn't in place 40 mm -hmm. years ago, obviously. Um, so, you know, could, could the approval uh, approval agencies come back with some requirements? They always can, uh, but I don't see something right now. It wouldn't be created by uh, the district or the design of the project. Okay, that's really great because one thing I did was sort of quote on the wish list from one of the board members, especially because of hygiene and viruses, et cetera, et cetera, is that the, the younger kids would have it. So the teacher would have a sink in those classrooms so they could clean up the children without having to run down the hallway, the younger kids. So I don't know if your design still has that or it didn't we have that. We typically are, we do typically plan for uh, sinks in the, um, in the classrooms, both for staff to be able to clean up as well as a student getting, you know, a, a filling up a water bottle, which, you know, I know my kids go through water bottles like there's no tomorrow, right. Um, right. which is, so it's become pretty standard. Um, but that, again, that doesn't increase the capacity of the building because it's really just a matter of is the student getting the water in the classroom or is he going down the hallway to get it? Sure. Um, so it puts us in a good position. Okay, well, this is really encouraging. Thank you so much, Jeff. I appreciate it. Appreciate knowing this thing.
Okay. I'd just like to remind everyone that the LC project email, um, LC project at kcsd.us is still being monitored actively. So any community members or citizens that have comments, and please encourage them to put them into um, that, that location so we can keep track of them. Okay. Any other um, questions or, or not? So Jeff, if you could give us a Reader's Digest version here of what we, what we can expect to see done over the summer, over the next three months, um, yes. where we will be at the start of the school year, I guess, in the okay. fall. Yeah, um, so for the coming three months, uh, we're, we're in the, again in the process of locking down the interior design layouts of the building. What will now happen over the next three months is we will fully transition into the design development stage of the project. Um, so we will be uh, in the next three months while everybody's gone for the summer, we will be confirming the, the, the overall three-dimensional design of the building. Uh, the engineering teams will be fully, uh, fully engaged. Um, they have already, we're in the process of turning models over to them. And they, they've just in the past few weeks started engaging. So when you come back at the end of the summer, it won't just be the architectural team. There will be structural models of the building. For instance, how, you know, roof steel, bracing, uh, lintels throughout the building, you know, all of the, all of the uh, foundation work will be complete. Um, the mechanical, so the HVAC heating systems, air conditioning systems will be preliminarily designed. We'll be looking at energy efficiency for the building. Uh, plumbing systems will be integrated. We'll be looking at electrical throughout the building, both powering um, as well as lighting systems. Uh, the civil engineer will have completed the survey. We will have also completed the geotechnical report that we discussed earlier, which will then allow the whole site design to be uh, uh, implemented and completed um, as we move into the fall. And then the goal is when everybody comes back at the end of the summer, uh, not just updating uh, all of the, you know, both the school board and the facilities, uh, but then we will also be meeting with the staff and having one final third um, approval of the layouts uh, of the project that they have preliminary seen the first three times. So, so a, lot, a lot's gonna be occurring over the next three months. So. Sounds like it. That's, and we're still on schedule then. Yes. Yeah. It's a right. schedule, and we're and we so we are moving very quickly right now. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. Anybody else have anything? Before we uh, let Jeff go here. All right. Well, thank you very much for that update. Appreciate that. Um, sounds like uh, we're moving right along here on on time. So. I uh, okay. appreciate it, Jeff. Thank you again. And uh, have a good afternoon. Talk to you soon. All right, moving on. Next item, the uh, some of the things that we had talked about that are going to be done here, hopefully over the next few months at the last meeting are listed here of the next two or three items. First one is the uh, Bucktail Girls Locker Room Project. And I think there's there's two attachments here, I believe, or one, I guess, that was talked about the um, the cost is there's I guess the first part is the 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 design uh, portion of that where we have to make sure that we meet code and everything, yep. um, and we're compliant with every along those lines, and then we once that's done, then we we'll do the we'll in house demo on it is that right rob yeah we're going the plan is when school's out we'll go ahead and start demoing some of the stuff that we can uh, in the meantime we'll be working with uh the engineers and the architects to come up with a uh, a plan that's going to meet everything as far as the guidelines for title nine uh what the, the code office is going to require all the different things that we're going to need to make sure that that locker room complies uh so once once uh we approve this they'll begin their work and then we can come back with a, uh, a cost of what it's going to uh, be to actually renovate the locker room to meet all the guidelines uh, of code and Title IX and all those sorts of things. So that's kind of where we're at with that, that project. And uh, we're gonna, our hope is to get most of this work done this summer 
So, you know, obviously we need to move along with this piece of it to, uh, to keep this on track. We still plan on doing most of the work in house. We're going to do as much as we can in house. Uh, we'll see how in lab or how in depth the uh, the design gets with uh, the code office and everything, and see how much we can handle and how much we can send out. Uh, obviously, we'd like to do as much as we can, but we're we're limited with some of the manpower and some of those things. So, uh, obviously, we want to get it done uh, sooner than later. So we're going to look look through that whole whole thing to see where we can how we can do it do we have a contingency plan in place in case we don't have it open by september for i guess the biggest concern would be the visiting teams coming in using it i i need to meet with the principal up there to find out what that really looks like and how how it's being used and how that sort of uh, thing is being used i'm not sure what teams are using and what aren't what they're doing outside versus inside those sorts of things so i i need to really uh, that's on my list of things to do to, to come up with, you know, if we go past September and it looks like we could, uh, you know, then what do we do for visiting teams and how often is it being used, those sorts of things. So I'll work on that for us, though, try and come up with some solid plan for that. Yeah, this, this job order that's attached to this, is that, what does that include? I mean, is that just the, is, is that the design portion and the- That's design going to the code office. Uh, that's getting through anything we need to for Title IX. Uh, drawings. I think there's some project management in that also, which we may or may, may push out. So I'll probably end up doing some of that. This is this is from our. That's the, this I'm was, doing it through the Gordian Group or right. through, and they're this hiring is, a local uh, state college firm to do that work though. And since this was part of the the ten year plan, as one of the projects we have, it's that's uh, coming out of the capital mon money. Is that correct? That's correct. Yes. That's what I I thought. I just wanted to make sure. Okay, well, anybody have anything else on that? Any questions or anything? It sounds like um, it's you know it's set up for to move ahead, and hopefully it'll be done by fall. So the start of school. So, Chair Jeff. Yes, Miss. Okay, thank you. Um, <clears throat> I, I just still feel very strongly about removing the gang showers. And the fact that, you know, we never, did we ever ask the students if they want the gang showers? And if the majority of the students don't want the gang showers or don't use the gang showers, um, what alternatives can we do just so the visiting teams can have something that we don't need the Hilton, <laughs> but I am very much against the gang showers in the 21st century. And I would like to know how much it would cost to get rid of them and put in something so the bare minimum needs are met because quite honestly, taking a shower, um, I really don't know <clears throat> on the priority list uh, for expenses if, if that's something that the whole board feels is a priority or not. So I've said my piece, but I still would like to see it. And I realize I'm only one voice. No, it's already part of what we're doing uh, with this design project. We've already, Rob and I have discussed it at length. And um, obviously there's ADA compliance issues, which is not currently available. So um, we'll, we're using the design process to, to redo that area and um, address the needs. Okay, so the gang showers are part of the discussion or not part of the discussion? Or I'm sorry, I misunderstood Dr. Martin. Absolutely part of the discussion and we don't want them either. <laughs> Of course, nobody. Wants. Yes, thank you so much. Happy to hear that. Looking forward to the updates. Um, does this contract include any security in those bathrooms? Or if not, how are we going to do that separately? Or um, is that still going to be dovetailed at the same time? One of the things I will say, I'm not sure exactly what what we're looking at or what you're looking at for security, but I, I have addressed with the design uh, professional already as far as that locker room at this, this current state is uh, 
has a single access to it, uh, looking at uh, adding an outside entrance to it uh, that's secure, some things like that to, you know, if, if they shelter in place in that area that they could get out of there without having to go back into school and some of those kind of things. But without getting into too much detail about safety and security, uh, I'll, I'll let it at that. But, you know, we are actively looking at that. And one of the things that I had told, told the design professional is that, you know, we had to make sure that whatever we designed in there, we, we had the safety of the students and, uh, you know, at the forefront, you know, how they design the sinks, where they put the sinks, where they put the showers, all those sorts of things uh, all had to be taken into consideration. And, and that's some of the reason why, rather than us trying to do everything in-house, uh, we've, we've elected to, to use the design professional to get us through this next phase of that. Uh, although there's a cost to it, I think at this point, uh, it makes the most sense kind of, in, like you said, in the 21st century. Uh, I've set up to look at a couple other uh, facilities that uh, have been recently done in our area, you know, the, getting rid of gang showers, those sorts of things. So I'll be personally going to look at those and uh, I'll be working with our design team to, to bring back something to this team that uh, is, is going to be a good project for everybody and something that, you know, we'll be proud of for a long time. Oh, Rob, I'm, I'm so glad you work for the district. Um, and when, when I'm, I should have refocused that question, but thank you for those updates on the security, that section too, I, that wasn't even on my radar. So thank you. Um, possibly consider, um, however it should be worded properly for me, that what Mark Kondo and the safety and security team committee are doing, um, Butch, you know what I'm talking about. And I'm not sure what I can say here, so I'm not saying anything, but there are certain things that are for the bathrooms. That I'll if say that I'm, I'm actively working with Mark and his team okay. Okay, uh, I'm done. to make sure that we're covering where you're our at. Whole, uh, our whole team had... works together on that stuff. Right. I just want to make sure it's on the radar so we all know that that's we're on it. of this. Right. Because I, 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 I don't see it on this document. That's, you well, know, you that's you wouldn't saying. see it on the document. Right. Okay. Done. And the last thing, um, we, I, I still feel highly confident that naming rights could be a part of this. And I granted, we're not going to finalize the policy probably until August. I'm not sure when, but sometime in the near future. There, I feel very confident that there's probably someone or someone out there who would love to have this brand new, updated, state of the art woman's girls facility named after them and if it means twenty thousand dollars thirty thousand dollars whatever whatever administration you know the naming rights committee if we have one we can do this i know we can so please look we gotta start somewhere okay thank you that process starts with the policy, so it will we'll be able to work through that. Um, once the policy is finished, we'll need to work with the foundation on a list of of I think depending on how the policy plays out, we'll follow those those procedures. But I think it comes up with a list of things that can be named and and the amounts of money. So I think we're a little ways off, couple several months out from getting the policy finished. But um, I feel like it'll be something that's it's already in motion and. Um, you know, obviously at some point, I think that this project could be part of that. Thank you very much. I'm done, Chair Jeff. Okay. All right. Anything else on that? I think we've talked it to death. Um, move on to number three here. The um, canopy replacement project at the middle school. I know we had briefly discussed uh, need for removing the current canopy that's well past its prime and should, and from a safety standpoint and nothing else uh, should be um, removed. And so I think we have, uh, by the looks of this, we have uh, Crabtree in line to come up with a design for that. It's not gonna be anything uh, nearly as elaborate, I don't think as we have like up at Bucktail or whatever, but it's something that'll be functional since we do have two main, other main entrances into that building that are used, but we need to have something that looks nice for that entrance into the, the main office. And 
That's correct. So um, something that's functional and looks has, has a nice design. And I think we have a the proposal there from Crabtree. And then we also have the removal of the asbestos and so on in the current one. So uh, just a couple key points on this one. You've got two proposals here, as you said, Jeff, the, the one proposal for the asbestos removal is just what we need to do to have another company do it. Then our team, we, we're saving some money having our team, um, our folks tear down and dispose of the remaining pieces. We, I know we've talked about that at length before. Um, and also in the Crabtree proposal, there was an additional $6,000 in there for construction, um, like construction management. We asked them to remove that since Rob would just serve as the construction manager. So we've, we've asked to get that number down and I just got the new one today. Um, so a couple hours ago, I replaced the, the attachment from last week with this one, which is uh, $6,000 less. So in case you didn't get to, if you looked at it earlier and looked at it now, there's, it's a, it's a better number. Well, what well, costs we don't have is the construction of the new one because this is just for the, is it for the design and construction both Rob? It's for the design, but there's design, no, yeah. Obviously, there's no uh, there's no price in there for what the new canopy will cost or the new structure will cost because we're not sure what that's even going to be at this point. So yeah. uh, the, the trick is going to be the timing because I don't want to have the canopy removed, have a hole there, and then we you know we we've got problems for a several months through the winter or something until we can get the new one up. So I think the timing of everything is going to depend on, on the design and the construction and the, and all that kind of stuff. So that's just, we just want you to know we're moving forward with it as you had directed, but it's moving slow. Did uh, Crabtree give you any idea on when that design, how long that would take to come up with that? I did not ask that question, but typically, you know, they get a, it's a fairly small project for them. So as mm -hmm. long as they have somebody to put on it, it'd be a pretty quick turnaround. I know that the, when we did the one up at Bucktail, they turned it around within a couple of months and it was much larger, a lot more dialogue back and forth. This, this has a lot less dialogue. It's pretty straightforward, uh, but I didn't physically ask, you know, how long, because we hadn't really given them direction that this is, has to be done. But I'll work through them with a phasing thing. If you know, if it's something that we can take off this summer and make sure that we take care of the hole that's in the front of the building from taking it off, uh, and then have the project for the following summer, what have you, I'll work through them with a with a phasing thing of how to do that. I just want to make sure the committee's aware that we are working forward or moving forward with with something on this thing. Uh, it's just getting through uh, all the pieces of it. Uh, obviously the the canopy it's there really needs to come down uh, mm -hmm. you know from for many reasons uh so we want to get that done but we also like, like dr martin said we don't want to have this big ugly thing in the front of the building for for a long period of time so i'll work with jeff and his team to uh to come up with good answers on that okay all right well that's certainly a, a project that needs to be taken care of and and done so anything else on that before we move on? Jeff, I, I would like to share one comment, please. Go ahead. Thank you. Rob, I know we talked about this like two and a half years ago, so it may, may have fallen off the radar, understandably, of course. Um, if the canopy is going to have recessed ceiling lights, mm -hmm. like they do now, of some sort of fashion, um, the LED spectrum, the ones that don't attract bugs. Yeah. So I don't remember what that what they're called right off the top of my head, but I know we talked about it like two years ago. So could you just keep them on the back of your radar whenever the the parts that you decide they're going to go in? Yeah, we can. We'll definitely look at that with with Thank the design you. team. It'll be. I'm assuming that uh, Crabtree will put the same design people that they used at uh, Bucktail. Uh, the lady I think did a, we talked about it last. Yeah, I think that was she did a nice job for us up there. I kind of requested that maybe she gets to take a look at this. I, I like what she did there for us, and hopefully she can uh, do the same thing uh, for us down here at, at this school and get us something that that works. And you know, we can address the lighting and all the different pieces with yeah, her down the once ring. that happens. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to put it back on the radar. So thank you, Rob. I appreciate yep. it. All right, let's move on here to. The other project that we have uh, cost numbers for, and that's the field house, 
the middle school field house insulation project. I know we discussed this last month um, briefly and the need for it. And we have now actually got some, some dollar figures as to what this is gonna be entail in terms of cost. Yeah, we'd like so, to move this forward for approval. So when when do you think this would be done? Rob uh, would like to do it this summer, right, Rob? Yeah, I'd like yeah. to do it this summer, but we have, we also have to keep in mind that uh, that working environment up there is uh, is going to be very hot. Uh, it may not happen summer. It may be September or October, just because of the heat that's in, that's built up in that area. When they go up there to spray spray the foam and everything, uh, they're limited by time of day and different things. So either either we have to do it as a night project, or we have to time it so that it's not you know they don't want to do it in the middle of August when it's you know 100 degrees all day long because you can't you can't work in that environment up there. So once again, it'll be scheduling and. You know, and those sorts of things, but we want to make sure that we have something done so that we can use this into the fall for the fall sports, and then also, uh, you know, use it again in the spring with for the spring sports rather than you know tell them it's shut down until May or what have you when the freezing weather starts and all that. So uh, it's going to be done through you know weather dependent, I guess, and it's really heat dependent and when the contractor wants to get in there. What's it? How long does it take this? to do this process i mean to, to i think they, they estimate it'll be in there three or four days to uh spray that that ceiling uh the end walls that sort of thing until they get set up and until they leave they'd be there three or four days so i just have to work through you know scheduling more than anything and uh so that we can get it done and then the next piece of that would be uh we have included money in a 10-year plan uh, looking at if we can get the gas line over there so we can use a gas furnace versus an electric furnace to, to further uh, boost our savings over there, you know, long term. So uh, we actually have some stuff out with the gas company now to see about getting the gas line to there so that the furnace can be gas instead of electric. And we have that covered within the cost of the uh, in the 10 year plan. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm excited with that project because it's certainly going to increase the way we amount of time we can use in that the facility and from what we have right now and i think it's it's going to be a good investment in there yeah it's also it's a labor intensive thing i mean i send a couple guys over there for a week 10 days i don't know ron or one you probably you see those work times they're over there a long time getting that building ready for winter and then then again ready for spring so there's a long-term savings to this also that you know we're not spending manpower unnecessarily so it's a good project all around it increases the usage and it also it it decreases our uh our manpower or our man hours that we need this came in lower than expected didn't it rob yeah i think we estimated 130 and i think we're at i i guess it's in front of me i think we're at 70 or 80 74 okay. so yeah it, it it is much lower uh We'll, we'll still have the cost of the gas line and the furnace, uh, depending on what the gas company does for us, whether it's their line or our line. Uh, and then we'll have a furnace that we're going to put put in there that it's going to get rid of. We're 100% electric in that facility at this point, and I'd like to get away from 100% electric and get something that has a, a much higher efficiency. Okay. All right. Chair Jeff, quick question. Go Thank ahead. You. I'm just curious, Rob. I'm just curious. Why do they have to purchase? I mean, it's it's only it's only three hundred dollars. Why do they have to purchase two portable lights? I mean, if we if that's getting purchased, you get to keep it, right? It, I'm sorry. It's, You're it's saying in the in the line items, the breakdown when they when they look at this stuff through the uh, job order contracting, they obviously they pick the items that they think they're going to need in there uh there if if in fact that we need to add lighting or something up there and we we do it or something then i work back and forth with the contractor to get some of that money back just as you know we had some equipment mobilization and, and those sorts of things but when you do the job order contract and they generally can't come back and ask for change orders or anything or they rarely ever do they try and cover everything up front uh, and if there's something that we can back out, then they just don't charge us. You just don't always see that because you approve this number, 
but that's why sometimes when we get to the capital, uh, when we look at the capital plan, the projects come in under because I negotiate some of that stuff back out that we may or may not need. Uh, but when they put it put it forward to us, it's always they have everything covered that they think they're going to need in there. So okay, so yeah. if they do, if if the school district has to purchase these two portable lights, you know, the kind of get at Lowe's. <laughs> yeah. Um, and if they do get purchased, though under the contract, then the contractor takes them with him as their equipment then, right? Is that how this works? Not necessarily. Most of the time, if they, they'll, what they'll do is they'll purchase, purchase string of electrical lights and they'll ask me at the end of the job, do you want us to just leave them up there for you guys so that if you have to do work in that area, you have uh, temporary lighting. Uh, there, I've been asked those questions many times. Uh, if, if, if we elect that we don't want them, then yes, the contractor would take them, but they still purchase them and they need them or they need them to, to complete the project because they can't work in the dark. So, you know, I have to work back and forth with that contractor to, to, to make sure that we're, it's whatever's happening is in the best interest of the school district, I guess. Uh, but most of the time he would just leave those for us. Uh, if it's a string of temporary lights or two strings of them, they're about $150 a string uh, for, you know, 40 feet of lights, I think. Uh, he would just leave those there. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll just be honest with you. Um, I don't, line item number two, um, I, I personally just think I get rid of it because it's sort of, it's just sort of looks like we're buying off the shelf stuff for the contractor. Either the contractor has the own equipment or we own the equipment. I think we're, but it's, I, I, I honestly don't, under, I know Robbie tried to explain it to me. I don't understand and it's, it's making me a little nervous if I was, this, you know, so I was just my, okay. My comment, remove line item number two, please. Or clarify that we're buying the contractor equipment. I will, I can see if we can get it removed and we'll, I'll just let them know that we'll provide some kind of lighting up there for them. If that makes, uh, makes it easier for, for the group or whatever. Uh, we can, we can work, I can work that out on that detail. I, I don't really, it's $299. Um, I'm not sure that that's going to break the school district. Well, and once again, they're, they're pulling this stuff from the book, the book that may not have string lights or what have you, they, it has lighting so they pick they have to pick something that most closely matches with what they're going to be doing uh, that's the way the state has set this system up and i will it may not be a portable light it may be a set of temper temporary string lights it could be there could be numerous different things but if if they do purchase them and it's something that was purchased for the job then it remains well, we'll take a look at it. If we can get it removed, we will. And then uh, hopefully you're feeling confident that we can bring this forward to the next board meeting. Yeah, I, I have no problem with it. I think we need to expedite this, get the thing going and and get it completed in time for, for use in the in the fall. Let's see, somebody else in the committee has a, any kind of a objection to that. If not, then I say we go ahead. Is this the only one that we want to put on for the next agenda then, this project? What I'd like to bring the locker room design forward so we can get that moving um, for Bucktail. I'd like to get the, the canopy. Um, so all of those. Like yeah, I'd like to get those there so that, I mean, when we do, if they're approved, we can get them scheduled again. Right. Um, it just gets things moving for us, the, the insulation forward as well. And then the next one is door replacement. We had previously talked about using the PCCD money, um, and there were more doors that needed done than what the PCC money, PCCD money provided. And all, these doors are taking long lead time. So um, this is just informational. You'd already told us to move forward with that, but um, it's just letting you know that we're going to uh, put some of the doors. There were three that were already, were or installed or set to be installed 
Um, we want to use capital funds for those three. And then Rob and I are aligning the PCC dollars, PCCD dollar grant dollars for the other doors. And then as we talked about before, taking the the door replacement dollars off the 10-year plan. Uh, we may need to put some in some out years, um, but as far as an every year thing, we don't we don't believe we need that. Okay, any objections to putting all of those projects, the locker room, canopy project, field house insulation, any objections to moving that, those three on for approval next month? I have none personally. No, it's going to be difficult even doing it June 15th to get moving in the project to get them completed. Yeah, it's unfortunate that we have to wait till the middle of the month to, just to get it approved. But. If I don't see a lot of objection from this committee and we feel that we're going to be moving it forward, I'll, I'll begin working with the uh, architects with, and they'll, they'll, be, they'll know uh, that it's coming and trying to work in their schedules. Uh, much as I did for the surveying, I think the surveying guys were out on the, the middle school already uh, and doing some of their preliminary work last week. So, you know, once we get the feeling from the committee and we can start to move some of these things along, I can, I like, I have a good relationship with a lot of these contractors. I can tell them, you know, this is going to go, this isn't going to go, those sorts of things so that we can uh, at least get work into the schedules and not be put in the schedule in the middle of June and be six weeks from that point or whatever. So right. they, they'll, they'll pencil us into spaces. Yeah, I really doubt that the full board will project right. any of these. So. And these are all 10 year plan items that we've right. discussed many times and uh, we're just getting them all, you know, move forward at this point. Okay. All right, moving on. The next item on the agenda is Sunday school events. And <laughs> this is me having Sunday school, but I think this uh, issue came up, I think at the curricular co-curricular meeting here a week or so ago. And it was, was discussed somewhat at that point. Um, and I think since it does involve use of the facilities, uh, that's why it's on this agenda. And so we thought we'd throw it out here for some discussion among the, the committee to see what, where we are with this. And I guess this was a request, as it says there, it was, I think all board members received a copy of the letter that came from the Clinton County Ministerium here a couple of weeks ago, I think it was, asking for the district to hold off on holding Sunday events uh, until after 1 p.m. so that it didn't conflict with a lot of the church services that were were held that on Sunday mornings. So I guess the question is, um, I don't think, and, and Jackie, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think that there's many, if very many, if, if any, school-sponsored events uh, that are using the facilities on you know, before Sunday afternoon. Um, there are not many, but there are some. And Elizabeth and Patty, you guys were present for the curricular co-curricular discussion. So this is going to sound a little bit familiar with to you, but it was my understanding as I watched the recording of that meeting that Stephen shared with you that there are not currently events going on before one o'clock. And I said, that's not true because Wanda's been sending me the requests. So there are some very... Um, like you said, Jeff, very few events, but there are some things. Most of those things are not school events. Most of those things are community type things, um, such as the, uh, there's a dance studio that le um, leases some space. Um, I know recently um, there was um, practice on a Sunday for the, the spring musical and so forth. Um, there's also a, like, the event that I have on this page right now says that uh, there's a noon event. It's actually for a two o'clock baccalaureate, which is one of our things that they just need the space ready at noon. Um, but the event doesn't start until after two. And then there's like a hunter safety course. They're using one of our buildings all day on a Sunday for something for the youth clubs. Um, and, you know, there's football workouts and open gyms and things like that in the field house that were requested before one o'clock. So I got the sense. Um, 
that the the curriculum group was under the impression that based on the request from the ministerium that we were already following that. So there are two there are two points of request where number one, don't punish any student who misses for a religious event, which is already happening, which you can't do anyway. And then number two is the, you know, there are sometimes events and like I know one that happens on Sundays annually is the king of the or queen of the mountain girls wrestling tournament that always is on Sunday following the king of mountain tournament and it's also you know kind of the makeup day so I think that committee and Elizabeth maybe you could help me out here it was my impression that the committee felt we were already adhering to what the ministerium was requesting and therefore no change was needed was that your understanding Oh, okay. That was a lot of information in a short period of time. I hope everyone's with us, right? Okay. Um, uh, all right. Yes and no. Um, Stephen, um, he, he did say that there are some programs that happen on Sundays. And he said, I can't remember if he said he does it or someone in administration does it. It doesn't matter who does it. But we were told that between up until noon or one o'clock on Sunday, I don't remember. They blocked out in the computer, whatever calendar is administration uses, they block out those hours anyways. No, we can't, um, we don't do that anyways. It's not a, it's not a general thing, but we can't. Okay, no, we that's, the ability. But he misspoke about that. Right, that was a misunderstanding. So what after, and to make a long story short, um, we feel that there's no right answer here. At least this was my perception that we can't I, ask the solicitor, okay? Because with so many different religions out there and so many days of the week that different religions practice their beliefs, for us to say Sunday is a different day from those other days, please ask the solicitor because quite honestly, um, I just, Let's ask the solicitor and then have a policy to back it up if we need it. That's that's my comment. Well, don't we already have a policy that addresses that type of thing along those lines? Um, there's nothing in our facility use policy that ref um, prohibits Sunday things. PIAA already prohibits events from being on Sundays, like competitions, but not practices. So like, you know, he was right. There's a few things that happen on Sundays, but I, I think the district needs the flexibility. So I think to say, we'll absolutely never do anything there on a Sunday um, limits us. And, and I think part of what I heard out of the discussion from other board members was, you know, people worship different ways and, the, you know, having the flexibility, um, you know, again, as long as students aren't being punished. And so, um, but then I also know there are other board members who feel the opposite, that we absolutely should not do anything until after one o'clock. So I, I wanted to bring it to this committee just to see, because the, the letter was addressed to me, so I'm the one that needs to respond to them. Um, and I, I have called them and just let them know that I'm, I'm taking some time to talk with the board members about it and I would get back to them. But I just didn't know where this board wanted to fall about, um, you know, the after one o'clock or not. Well, I personally don't know that or feel that that um, our coaches in that necessarily need to have stuff scheduled on Sunday mornings necessarily. Um, if they want to do something on the afternoons, that's fine. But as far as outside groups, you know, I don't think that we really have much say in that unless we change the policy to address no use of the buildings period on Sunday mornings mm -hmm. and that would be you know I, I don't I don't know that we could actually I suppose we have the the right to do that yeah you do but, I mean a legal right to do that but I don't think that it, it's probably a good PR move with the community mm -hmm. to do that <laughs> especially since there are a number of outside groups that want to use the building and it is some know, it is a public facility so well jeff you're correct and some school districts actually lease space to church groups for sunday services right. so That's i think true. that would limit the district's flexibility um but you you know again that queen of the mountain is technically i mean it's a school event because 
it's 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 a school event but it's not a school event because it's actually an event that's done by the wrestling booster club right and we didn't know, yeah. pay we didn't. for the, the building that day so again mm -hmm. we would be turning away revenue and possibilities by by limiting it but i it's something i wanted i, I know that Polly really wanted to discuss that and she had to leave that meeting before that came up so i am gonna i have a call into rick i am gonna ask if we could bring that back to curricular co-curricular at the next meeting because she just she didn't get a chance to weigh in and when i talked to roger um, about it um he was in favor of after one o'clock for school events so i think it's i kind of feel like it's still split out there a little bit yeah, the Queen of the Mountain is not really a PIAA thing. It's a, no, it's it's a wrestling tournament. but it's tournament. not a school district thing. It's sponsored right. by the booster club exactly. that we participate in. But wouldn't the simplest thing just put the answer would be the school district does not routinely schedule any events for Sunday morning, and no athlete will be punished for missing for religious services? Well, that was the idea about the policy idea is that if there is going to be some sort of general understanding about Sunday, that it, it's got to be written down in black and white. Otherwise, but again, I highly recommend you talk to the solicitor first, get their legal opinion about whether Sunday is any different than of Wednesday. Please. Well, I think that we, we have the, the right to do that. I don't think that there's anything legally saying that we are we are not allowed to say that we're not going to use the facilities on Sunday mornings. I, you know, I doubt David Lindsay will say wrong, but I'm, I, I, he may, but I think I would still ask that, him first. That, That's that, my right? two cents. And honestly, I don't think there should be any stipulations at all on Sunday. That's my two cents. Either, either we renting it out and it's open to the public or it's not. Well, I but think that Elizabeth, times like, on it, unless yeah. there's reason. Well, Elizabeth, I think I, I'm following you. And I told you sometimes I, I am following what, what you're saying there. And that is that there are so many different types of religions that we would be catering to one and not adhering to the wishes of others. And so um, it could look like we're discriminating against other religions. But um, Again, you you are correct, Jeff, too, that if the district wishes to make that policy, they can, whether or not they're at legal risk or what legal risk they would run, um, I guess, is what the solicitor would weigh in on. Yeah. And then I think we can really have a, a real good conversation about it. I mean, that's how I feel about it. So thank you for asking, though. Well, I think what Butch, Butch's point is, is one that's pretty well taken, at least from my point of view. I mean, I think if we say you know, as, as he stated there, you know, that we don't routine, routinely schedule things on Sunday mornings. I mean, you know, it's not like we're having football practice every Sunday morning or basketball practice. Um, every once in a while, they'll have something that that will come up with. And I think that was where the ministerium was probably coming from. I mean, that's um, a simple thing. Write them a letter back saying we do not routinely schedule anything on Sunday morning. And no athlete will ever be punished for missing because of religious reasons. It's answered. It's their response. They should accept it, and we're done. We move on. Yeah, and, and for along our school program, there's several different places we can put that if you want. We can put it right on the front page, where it can be a pop up. Like if you schedule something on a Sunday, that will like pop up. What? The one comment I guess I'll make on it, and uh, Dr. Martin and I were involved in this a few years back when uh, another district didn't want to have anything on Sundays. And so it kind of comes back to me a little bit. But one of the things that I, I, I do like what uh, Butch had said about it, I think that kind of sums it up. But what I don't want to prevent is if if we're, we make playoffs for something and they make playoffs on Thursday, they want to practice Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I don't want it to be so restrictive that I say, well, you can't practice Sunday morning because of playoffs. There's, there's circumstances that will come up uh, that they may need to use the building uh, so that they can get their practices in before the next game or some of those things. We, we routinely don't get a lot of requests for Sunday morning. And a lot of the requests that we do, do get are limited, uh, because of staffing we can only staff so much stuff and a lot of times we can't get the staff we need to open the building and our all of our policies say that you know we'll have staff present on and for most of these events so sometimes 
uh, if we we can't hold an event, it's not because of it being Sunday morning, but it's because we don't have the manpower because our staff is busy with their other things, with religious things they may be doing or what have you. Uh, so I like what Butch said because it kind of gives us a, an out in many ways, but staffing seems to be a thing on Sunday mornings that is a little more difficult for, for me to find to get people into the building at that hour. Uh, so having some flexibility in that, I think, I think it's good. So, and even if you, if they do have a situation like you're talking about, Rob, where they would have a, a playoff situation where they needed to practice the weekend. I mean, they could still probably do it Sunday afternoon or something. Yeah, yeah that's I why I put routinely in there. Right. Routinely, you don't do it. Right. But there's going to be extenuating but circumstances are, that might dictate you have to. If there are, you know, certain situations that come up that, yeah, would I, prevent that. Well, oh, so part of it is just knowing your kids knowing the kids that are in the program and knowing, you know, if, if half your students are not going to be there because there's a church event, then you, you wouldn't schedule it then. Exactly. So you also have to know your kids and, and have relationships with them so that you know that. And I, I know that parents will speak out too when they feel strongly that their kids can, um, they don't want them to miss, miss events. So I think we're okay there. I, I do just want to give some of the other board members an opportunity to, to weigh in and um, because I know Polly specifically wanted to talk about it and she didn't get an opportunity. So, no, all right. We are kind of over time, but I have a few more things I wanted to share with you if I can get through yeah. those. You talking about the rest of the informational items here? Yeah, um, so we did the energy savings, the admin um, update. So we've been typically updating our 10 year plan approximately every six months. And so based on some of the projects that we got completed this year that we're on next year and some things on, you know, the things have been switching around and changing and obviously, you know, as we get closer to these projects and we get pricing, we've got updated numbers. And so um, Rob and I have been working um, along with Joni on some of those, you know, just getting a panel. You can see our work because you all have access to that 10 year facility plan. And it's, I created a new tab at the bottom called draft. And I think I labeled it for July um, of 23. Um, we're going to be sitting down in Wanda as well and kind of just getting all the numbers updated. There's been some additional projects identified as well, such as some of the hot water heaters that are going to need to be replaced and things of that nature. So again, we're um, updating that plan and the next facility meeting that we would have, which may not be what until August, Jeff, or July, I'm not sure. Um, yeah, we're going to going to mention that at the end here. Okay, so whenever our next plan, and we, we should have that ready um, for your review um, in, you know, when we when we get back together. But I also, what we did the last time and what you all said was really helpful was we took the, the project list and ran it by each of the building principals so that they were fully aware and that they got to have input on the ranking, the rank order um, of the priority for them. And so some of those things have been done and some things have changed. So um, again, we'll, we'll get that updated for you. So I just wanted to let you know we were working on it. The next one is Champions Program. And the Champions Program is. I'm sorry, Chair Jeff, can I just make a comment real quick? Sorry, real quick. Real um, quick. Have, yes. Have, have we considered all the projects that are already completed? I know you guys keep meticulous records on that, but if it could also be part of the facility, so any new board members that come on or any new staff come on, they can look at that one document pending and then completed That's um, all. well what i don't know why they have to be on there if they're completed yeah if they're already I, done we don't need them it I would be pending like a second. And in future perhaps but i could see having pending projects and future needs or future wants or future desires but and i don't know why we have to put something on it that we've already completed and they've they're already listed by year as to when we're going to be doing them so so I was going to say what, what you can find, where you can find that is on the previous tabs. It's in the same document. You would just go to the previous tab because what happens in the document we have is we add a year on the end and take one off. So all the information is already there. Great. That's all. That's we're done. That's done. Thank you so much, Dr. Martin. Okay. Back to the champions program. Champions program. So one of the key things that school districts have been doing over the last several years 
is adding before care, before school care and after school care. And one of the reasons they do that is convenience is not only for members of their community and the families that they serve, but also for staff members. And I know that some districts that I've worked with have um, discussed multiple times about sometimes families choose charter schools because they are offering those things to lure uh, families to their, their programs. So um, over the last couple of conferences that I've been to, um, there's many vendors and, and this has become a, a hot vendor item for school districts. And so I've been talking with some of these vendors about the different programs and the champions program is, is one I think best fits our district. And what I'd like to do is partner with them through our community education program and allow the champions program to set up in our elementary schools. And they would provide before school care from 6 a.m. to 7.30 at each of the elementary schools, potentially. I'll, I'll give you a caveat to that later. Um, but they are prepared to do all five schools. And then from 2.30 or 2.40 when the students are dismissed, they would run after school care until 6 p.m. They're providing a very reasonable rate. Um, I think the, the morning time, um, and Christy, you were part of that discussion too with the vendor. The morning um, time they were charging, I think, $30, $35 or something like that for five days a week. Maybe it was $40. I feel like it was $35. $35 for, um, it was $30 for before school care and also um, $70 for after school care five days a week. And then they had some other ways to do it. Um, like if you only needed it so many days a week, they would prorate stuff. Um, they're also willing to provide a 10% discount for our employees who would use these child care services. Um, they would use our space just similar to what the YMCA program uses now, usually a multi-purpose room and um, either a classroom or the library, they need two spaces. Champions is actually, I put a link there if you wanted to explore their company. They're legit, they're an accredited um, child care program. They have a curricular agenda. They're very big on STEM. Um, they've also talked to me about what our math and English curriculum are and about the STEM so that they are, you know, keeping things lined up and together. Um, they, they do all their own hiring. They are paying their employees pretty well. Um, they said a lot of times you get paraprofessionals and, and people and they would have also, they would be hiring a site manager um, locally to, to manage everything. So um, I, I think it's a great opportunity for us. Rob and I talked about the facility use and any additional wear and tear. Uh, if the prices that they gave us were for families with, um, in if we did not give them, if we did not charge them to use our space, and if we charge them to use the space under the facility use policy, they would have to pass that along to the families using the program. Um, in my discussion with Rob, we, we don't think, we think the benefit to our employees and to our families far outweighs any changes. We're not going to incur much additional costs um, for, for water, electricity, or anything. We just maybe adjust some cleaning schedules, but it's not going to cost us any additional custodial or staffing or anything. The other thing about this company that I like them better than others is because we have Title I qualifications, families in our area that qualify with poverty rates can get subsidized for the child care. And they actually do all the help. They help the families and sit down with them and, and help them get approved for that subsidy. They'd also provide a snack after school. Um, they would be um, ordering through our food services department and we would be invoicing them for the snacks if they were on site each week. Um, so that's a benefit to us. And then I think the other thing was um, they have all their own supplies. Um, they have carts on wheels. They have everything delivered, white glove delivery, and um, we, they would store it at the end of each session, wherever we tell them to store it. They would have all their clearances, and I told them we would want their clearances on file at the district level, and um, they would follow all security procedures. They have their own technology. So it's, um, I think it's a great opportunity. I uh, just wanted to run this past you. I mean, if you feel strongly that we need to charge them for the space, then I need to, to let them know that so they can adjust their prices. We have the YMCA program currently operates out of the Mill Hall Elementary after school only. And at Liberty Curtain, there's an In God's Hands program that operates after school. I know the YMCA struggles with staffing. So I do have a meeting with them tomorrow to, to let them know what we're looking at. 
I don't want to kick them out. If they still want to operate out of Mill Hall, they would have the opportunity to do that. And then the same within God's hands. Dr. Martin, do we charge the YMCA and in God's hands? Uh, I asked Rob to find yeah. that out. I, and I did uh, follow up with uh, Wanda on that. And it looks like we charge $50 a month. But in the backside of that, we still provide a lot of the cleaning. We come in and clean up afterwards after the kids leave in the afternoon program. Uh, I'm not even sure why the $50 charge is in there. Uh, it, it really doesn't doesn't do a whole lot in the big picture. So, uh, no, we're not we're not doing anything to anything substantial for charging. But I, I will say from and you touched a little bit on that with the uh, you know people going elsewhere. Uh, they, they'll look at charter schools and some of those other things uh, because we don't offer these kind of services. And I know years ago, uh, once again, you and I were, were sitting, you know, working for other districts that had this similar thing. And it was very difficult to get a, a school-based program in to do this kind of thing, to actually attract people to stay within your district. I know that there's, I had the same thing with when I was on a school board that, you know, we needed to have a program like this, but the schools were limited in, in how to do it. And it sounds like they figured out how to do it now. And I, I would say that, you know, we don't really want to pass those costs on to our, uh, onto those people that need that daycare. I think it's, you know, daycare is expensive enough. Uh, it really isn't going to, we're, we're, we're starting to occupy our buildings about five thirty, six o'clock in the morning with staff, with heat, all those pieces, uh, you know, it's very minimal amount of water, all those things. So from my standpoint on a facilities use, I don't see it to be a big impact to uh, my cost uh, because we're already doing a lot of that stuff already. But I see a benefit from, you know, we're not going to be, we're not going to have a charter school attract somebody because they're, they're providing this service. And I know that that's a big thing for some families if they can get, you know, cheap or free daycare they send their kid elsewhere, not based on what the education thing is, just because it's a convenience thing. And I think they finally come up with a convenient way to, to do some of this. So I'd be in favor of uh, working with this group and hearing a lot more about it. Remind me again, yeah. though, is this all year round? They would start, yeah, they would start on the first day of school. They also would provide care for families if we have like a half day early dismissal, you know, a planned one for like in-service or something. They would also follow our delay schedule and early dismissal schedule for inclement weather. What about the summertime? Summer. I think no, is really what Joni's yeah, so going all year round, meaning through the summer, because what if it's not a school employee? Yeah, well, they do have that service. Okay. Um, we I'm not looking at that right this moment. I, I wanted to see, you know, how would it work with them doing these programs? Are we happy with them before we added something like that? Um, I believe through next summer is when we're still um, scheduled with ESSER funds to provide our summer program. Um, but I don't know. I, I feel like they'd work with us if um, on whatever our need was. But again, it's not free for families like our summer school program. Well, I can, I can tell you the YMCA and In God's Hands is just school year. Like first oh, day to last day. They don't do summer. Oh, okay. They run summer at their at, at the YMCA. They just don't do it at our buildings. Yes, I understand. Okay. And that's even God, in God's hands. They do it at their building during the summer. Oh, but I that is an option if if we want to work with them more. Okay. I guess you have to see mm -hmm. who. They would be getting also licensure through Pennsylvania as a daycare program. So they need a couple items from us about water usage and locations and evacuation plans. And I've, um, so I, I, I'm planning to move forward with this and, and put it through community education. Um, but it, it, I guess my question for this committee is, should we look at charging them or not charging them? I, you know, if we're only charging the other guys $50. I, I think that I look at this as a, as a service to, to parents, to the community. And it's, I really like the fact that they have a sliding fee scale. And I, I, I see no reason that we need to charge them. Um, because I think that if we're doing this as a service, I, I it seems to me that it's, it's a win-win for everybody. I mean, uh, especially for, you know, like you said, if we're going to be, we're going to try to battle the charter school stuff and that, um, I think it's a great, 
it's a, it sounds like a great program. I mean, as long as it operates the way they, they say it operates, I, I say go for it uh, and not charge them at, at all. I mean, for, you know, especially since we're charging the other groups a nominal fee, I don't think we should even charge them really. Well, this, if they, go, go ahead, ahead. I'm sorry. I was just kind of follow up with what Jeff said. I think if, if you know, my meetings with them, if we're not going to charge this group, then I don't think we should be charging the other groups either. If they just decide to stay and maintain, I think they'll be competing um, for staff. Um, I, I feel like this pro, I don't know. I don't want to hurt the YMCA program at all uh, in the process, which is why I want to be transparent with them. I did want to say that the mill hall program and the Renova program would be K through six eligible and the other schools K through four. I was just going to comment about the YMCA. I, I don't want to see them forced out if this other group comes in because we do need them for the swimming pool and things like that for the kids. But, you know, I don't, I think we should charge all the different entities the same amount. So whether it's going to be $50 for all three or reduce the other two and give it to them for free. I don't really care. $50 a month is not enough really for us to, worry about but yeah so. processing it's an <laughs> yeah um, i agree with you though consistency is key yeah no whatever we do for one we have to do all of them yeah. whether it's charge them all 50 bucks or nothing and i i, I think like you said 50 dollars is you know that's peanuts and that's through i think just as a goodwill effort and, and you're right i don't think we should force mill the mill or uh ymca program out of mill hall if they want to continue. I mean, and, uh, yeah, I don't know what they're, if they're struggling with staffing. I know they have in the past really struggled with that. So they may be, who, who knows? I, it's worth the conversation. I've got that scheduled for tomorrow. But I just want to let you know what I was working on and just um, keep you involved. I think this will be a huge hit with the community and the company does all of their own letters to families, um, flyers promoting it. They do all their own hiring and everything. And um, like I said, they'll, um, they're also planning to have an open house at some point to let families come in and see their space. And, and they were re really excited about getting to work with us. Yeah. It was, it was one of the questions I thought about how, how are they going to promote this? And that's all on them. Just not before one on Sundays. They wanted to send a, a letters to families and open house and flyers and things like that to let people know that the service is available. They've already started canvassing and recruiting. Yeah, I kind of see this as another tool that's in the toolbox for the district that will help families want to be here. It provides a service that is kind of lacking. And, you know, I, I'm really thinking back and I and picture Chris Hauser sitting and talking about this when we were at Penns Valley about how if we provided this service, how families would stay within the district and not go to uh, Sugar Valley. And, you know, I, I, I remember. State college. Yeah, I, I remember those conversations, you know, 15, 20 years ago, and we couldn't provide this service and we lost kids uh, to charters for that. And, you know, that's, you know, we, as we know, 10 to $30,000 a year, we're losing uh, to send a kid elsewhere. So being able to have another tool, I think is great. Elizabeth. Here, Jeff, thank you. Um, okay, I have so many notes here. Sorry. We have two so it's, this is what it sounds like to me. We're subcontracting with a third party company to offer a program before and after school for anywhere between K4, K6. So it's a subcontracted company. Okay. So this is what I, I personally feel. And this is just notes that I've taken in the last 10 minutes. Um, one, the contract would have to be reviewed. Obviously, administration is going to do that. The board's going to see it, but I would really like it to go through the solicitor before it goes to the board members. This is just my opinion my, on this, because this is what I'm seeing. <clears throat> um, I, I like to think that we would have a one-year trial period and see how it goes. I also want to know in the contract the ratio of adult to children, because if they have um, behavioral issues, uh, special needs children, things like that. Um, you know, we have to be, I want to 
we've always felt for many, many years that the school should have some sort of program to offset the parents and guardians needs after school. I don't want to use the word daycare, but we're, but I do want to see in the contract that so many hours per day are going to be spent actually on something that is educational that correlates with what Megan's team for curriculum is working on. That's what they said. They, they well, said I, that they wanted to see our curriculum so they could they can yes. coordinate with that. Yes, but in the contract. So it's specified very detailed in the contract and things like transportation. Um, you know, so there's there's all these little things that- We're not I, providing transportation. I, it's, it's another group that's using our space and um, right. it isn't any different than what we're doing with the YMCA. Right. And I, I'm and sure I that, they're, that they're, when they look at the agreement there, you know, all of these things are going to be are going to be covered in there. And, and I don't think we would get on board with any any entity that's not going to be so, up to our stat, our to our satisfaction. Maybe oh, I'm absolutely. looking at it differently, Elizabeth, but I'm not looking at it as a subcontract. It's not. I'm looking at it more as leasing a space in our building. We're going to allow this entity to come in and use our building to provide this service. So it'd be the same thing we're doing to the uh, the Clinton County Elementary Basketball Program. We allow them to come in and use our building. It's the same thing in my eyes. You know, maybe I'm looking at it differently, but that just so as far as the transportation, that's up to them, just like it's up to the basketball program. It's up to them to provide their curriculum and provide their notification to the parents, provide their staff counts to their parents. I mean, that's all up to them because all we're doing is providing a space for them in our building, like we're doing with the YMCA and then God's hands. So well, that, that's, that's perfectly well put, Butch. I appreciate that because that's exactly what I'm trying to get at is what does the school board as a whole see as this company doing? Either in the contract, it's daycare or it's also going to be supplemental education. How, and, how different is that than when what the YMCA is providing right now? There is no difference in, from, what, from my perspective as to what they're, they're proposing here is no different. In fact, I think they're providing, to be honest, more than what for these kids and parents than what the YMCA is offering because they, they be, basically they're just a, they are a daycare. These guys are, are putting an educational component to it. Um, they're, you know, they're, I think they're, it seems to be a little more um, structured maybe than some of the others. I, you know, just based on what I'm hearing about it and, and which is right, we're giving them a space. We're not, and that's why we're not monitoring their, their program. That's up to them. And, and if the parents don't want, if they don't like it when they get in there, then they won't continue to use it. And that's why I'm leaning toward charging them the $50 a month. Only that way it's at the, we're, we're leasing them the building, not providing it to them. And I think that would clean things up more in my mind. It's them leasing the building even it's a minimal fee, but yeah. Well, but, that's I mean, well put, Butch. That's exactly that's exactly where I'm trying to go with this. Is that it's either a separate program that has nothing to do with Keystone. It's just a special thing. That's it's a great program if someone wants to utilize it. All right, it's either over here lease program. We are not involved at all. Or B, it's over here where it would be free of charge, but in the contract it stipulates some sort of guidance or some sort of vision that is agreed upon between administration and the board that they would also be doing these things to help our kids be more prepared as they go into their you're, you're looking year. at it as like the program that the summer program that we're operating right now which it is not it is not a, a program at least it, from what my understanding of it is it is not like that. We are not, we're not providing staff. We're not providing anything. All we're doing is providing the space for them to operate this program and provide a service for parents for their, for their children before and after school. It's up okay. To well, them. then if that's what it is, if that's what everyone agrees to, that we are completely, then we charge them. That's, that's how I, I feel about it. Just keeping the, the, the same minimum fee. Well, which, that's why them. that's what we're charging YMCA and in God's hand. If it's only $50 a month, 
We tell these same people, yes, $50 a month. I don't think that's going to impact what they're going to charge the family to use it. No. Mm -hmm. I don't think $50 a month is going to be that uh, detrimental to their, their rate scale, but it'll keep everything equal. And then we're actually saying, we don't know what you're doing because we're leasing you the building. So right. That's right. We're either hands off or we're going to also make it as a building block yeah. for our kids. That's not really our choice. Um, they, this is the service they offer. I mean, okay. they've, coming, they've given us our pitch. The elementary principals said, well, I don't know why we wouldn't do this. They really liked the program. They thought it'd be great for the, the community and mm -hmm. they were willing to work with them on the space issues. So um, I think I have clear direction on this uh, moving forward. Thank you. Yeah, charge them if it's a if it's a lease, one hundred percent lease. Thank you. Okay, last item here, and I know we're running over time here, so uh, just information will let you know when you see some things on the board agenda that we didn't discuss specifically. A lot of them are just annual maintenance contracts and renewals, and uh, we've already had some come through, and you'll see some more over the next couple of months. And that's all we have. Okay. All right. Um, as far as uh, any other items, that's, that concludes the agenda items. Uh, the only other thing is that as far as uh, future meetings, I don't really think, and I'm, you know, I'm gonna make the recommendation that we do not meet in July, June or July, um, because I don't think that there's that gonna be that many things that are gonna be happening. Um, with the Liberty Curtain Project or whatever, if there's something that really comes up that's urgent during the month of July, we would be able to possibly call a meeting then, but I don't really see a needing, need to with people's travel schedules and vacations and so on during the next couple months. I know that I will not be available in for the next June meeting anyway. I'll be out of state and on vacation, and, and I know that that Dr. Martin, I think, has a conference during that time period. So that's my recommendation that we hold off and, and uh, wait until August prior to the start of school for our next meeting. I mean, that sounds good, guys. <laughs> I just look at my calendar. I'm not going to be around in July. And I might be here for that one in June, but I won't be here in July at all. But so I, I would recommend the next meeting we have would be August 22nd. Right. Fourth Tuesday. Fourth Tuesday. Which we also, um, would we have a finance committee? Would that be the next finance committee meeting as well? Yes, I think we cancel those for June and July also. Okay. So we'll schedule that for do the same thing, August 22nd. Okay, yeah, thank I you. I have it on my calendar. Yeah, and if there's something that I need in the in the middle of that, I'll communicate it to Dr. Martin, and I'm sure she'll email the committee members. Uh, at this point, I I'm I'm comfortable with that schedule. Same. Okay, Elizabeth, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, yes, I've said it many times. Everyone needs a break, but I just want to make sure we all understand that when we come back in August that all of a sudden it's not going to be, look, we got to get this done right away. If there's something, please administration, please Rob, if there's something that you feel that waiting until August is too late and we're going to have to rush and push it through, please notify us ahead of time. So if we have to meet in July, we'll meet in July. Okay. That's there's all I ask. And there's nothing we're aware of at this time. Um, the only thing that could come up between now and then would be any type of emergency repairs that I'm aware of. We've got enough projects on the docket right now that we're not looking for more work. <laughs> well, that's all. That's great. Just so we're not at the 11th hour come August. Okay. Super terrific. You guys were wonderful. Thank you so much. All right. With that, uh, motion to adjourn is always entertaining. You got it. I'll second. Thank you, everybody. Oh, boy. Thank you. Are we on the set?